you know, one of the areas, as you know, that I spend a lot of my energy is this intersection between the corporate sector and, and sustainability and environment. I'm not sure what the label ought to be. Um, and, you know, one of the interesting challenges, and I'm, I'm certain you've talked to executives about it, and, and it, it, when you discuss this, very often the response I hear is, you know, but I don't know what I can do. What, you know, I, I only run this little $10 billion firm. Um, <laughs> no, no, but seriously, that's a small firm today, right? Yeah. Um, you know, what, 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 what impact can I have? And I think we need to find ways to help empower everybody to understand that everything each one of us does can have a material impact, the things we buy, uh, the things we waste, um, how we do our planning, how we think about our supply chains, all those things can have an impact. Um, and sometimes we need to create external forces like the move toward you know, um, carbon counting and things like that. It's now become increasingly important. But you know, there, there are ways you can do things and, and, and win by doing the right thing if you're framing it the right way. There's, a, um, I'm sad that I'm blocking on the guy's name, but he's again, no longer with us. The, the chairman of Interface Carpet, uh, Ray, I'll think of his name. Um, at the break, we'll, I'll, look, yeah. I'll look it up. But this is a man, carpet, carpet making is a notoriously dirty business. If you think right. about it, right, it's, uh, you, you, you make the stuff heavily out of petroleum, um, 10 percent of it gets worn this is industrial carpet not residential 10 percent of it gets worn and then you rip it all out and throw it all away and it just goes into landfill and it's just really not environmentally that good ray anderson ray anderson was the chairman of interface and he was influenced by the thinking of paul hawk and and then uh, undertook something that was developed in, in Scandinavia called the natural step, which basically looks at the world as a closed ecosystem and, 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 and industry is part of it. And he took all of his people through the training um, and he really reshaped the, the, the company, it became wildly profitable. He helped him reposition in a market driven by architects and designers. Um, and, um, and uh, you know, and, and, he, and he empowered his people. There's this wonderful story how someone had come from another firm to learn about what they were doing. And this woman uh, was in the, the boardroom and needed to go to the restroom. And the, uh, the, the restroom was down on the shop floor. And she's walking across the shop floor and runs across this woman driving a forklift. Uh, and she asked her to point her to where the restroom is. And, and, and the woman says, why are you here? And they get into a short conversation. And and this truck drive, this, this uh, you know forklift driver starts lecturing her, and she's hearing from the forklift driver the same thing she was hearing from the chairman about why it's important, why we build wow. our products a different way, why we think about these things, and then all of a sudden she looked at her watch and watches. Listen, excuse me, because if I don't move this roll of carpet over to the cutting machine, it's going to screw up the entire production line and it's going to throw all these other people. So please pardon me. Wow. But see, that's the power of yeah. That's the power yeah. of real leadership and, yeah. and engagement with from the C-suite to the factory floor. Yeah, that's so powerful. <laughs>